Today we're going to look at a really nice geometry problem. So let's say we start with a straight line and then we put two circles tangent to that straight line. And let's say those two circles are of radius one and then we roll them until they're tangent to each other. Okay, so we've got a straight line and then two circles all touching. And now what we want to do is inscribe a circle in the opening between these three figures. And then after that, we'll inscribe a circle between, well, the smaller circle, the straight line, and the circle of radius one. And then we'll inscribe a circle between, well, the smallest circle so far, and the straight line, and the circle of radius one. And then we'll continue doing this on and on and on. And now let's shade one of the circles of radius one, and then all of the circles that we've inscribed in this scenario. And our final goal is to find the area of this shaded region, this shaded collection of circles, which are all like kind of drifting off until they're infinitely small. Okay, so let's back up a little bit and see if we can maybe look at a more general version of the very starting question. Let's say we've got a straight line, a circle of radius A and a circle of radius B all touching and we inscribe a circle between the straight line and those two circles, let's find the radius of, well, that circle that we inscribe. We'll first say that that circle of, is of radius R. And then looking at a triangle that we make with the center of the inscribed circle and the center of the circle of radius A, using the Pythagorean theorem, we can come up with the following equation. So let's observe that we have x squared plus a minus r squared equals a plus r squared. Where as you see, x squared is that distance, essentially the horizontal distance from the center of the inscribed circle and the center of the circle of radius a. But now we can do something fairly similar with the circle of radius B. And well, let's say that Y is that corresponding uh, horizontal distance and we get the following equation. So we'll have Y squared plus B minus R squared equals B plus R squared. Okay, nice. And then, well, we're gonna need one more triangle in this situation. And let's say that the hypotenuse of that triangle is from the center of the circle of radius A to the center of the circle of radius B. And then, well, we create the rest of the triangle via a horizontal line segment and a vertical line segment. And it's pretty easy to see the measurement of those three. The horizontal part will be X plus Y, which we defined before. The vertical part will be B minus R, and then, well, the hypotenuse is A plus B. So that gives us this nice situation, X plus Y squared, and then, let's see, plus B minus A squared is equal to A plus B squared. So we've got that kind of scenario. Okay, nice. But now we'd like to work with these a little bit until, well, of course, our goal is to solve for R, hopefully in terms of A and B. So let's start by taking these two equations up here and expanding them out. So that'll give us X squared plus A squared minus 2AR plus R squared equals A squared plus to a r plus r squared. And then the second one expands out similarly. So we've got y squared plus b squared minus two b r plus r squared. And then over here we're gonna have, let's see, that's gonna be b squared plus two b r plus r squared. Okay, so we've got something like that. But now observe that a bunch of stuff cancels in those equations. So let's observe that this a squared will cancel with this a squared. This r squared will cancel with this r squared. 
And then likewise, we have a b squared and a b squared and an r squared and an r squared that cancel in the maybe second equation. And now let's dive into what this third equation is telling us. So let's see, if we move this b minus a squared over to the right hand side, we can solve for x plus y quantity squared. And what will that be? Well, that's going to be a plus b squared minus a minus b squared. But working that all out, it's pretty easy to see that, that is four times a times b. And now, well, at this point, what I'd like to do is maybe transpose versions of those equations right here and see what we have. So observe in the end here, we have x squared will be equal to 4ar. So we can take the square root of that and we'll see that we have x is equal to two times the square root of a times r. And then likewise, we can take that second equation and we'll see that y is equal to two times the square root of b times r. And then finally, we can maybe take the square root of our x plus y quantity squared equation and we'll see that x plus y is equal to two times the square root of a times b. Okay, nice. But now notice that x plus y is equal to x plus y. So we can set the sum of these first two equations equal to the third equation. And let's see what that'll give us. So we'll have the square root of a times r plus the square root of b times r is in fact equal to the square root of a times b, where of course what I did there is I divided everything by two. But remember, our goal is to find the radius of that inscribed circle between, well, our straight line, our circle of radius A, and our circle of radius B. So looking at this, well, now we've got an equation that only involves A, B, and R. So we can probably do some symbolic manipulation on this and find out what R is. So let's do that. We'll square both sides of this equation and, well, over here on the right-hand side, we'll get AR, or I should say the left-hand side, we'll have AR plus two times R times the square root of AB. So that's how that cross term will go. And then plus B times R. And then over there on the right-hand side, we'll have A times B. Now let's observe that everything on the left-hand side has R as a factor, so that means that we can factor it out. And that's gonna leave us with r times the quantity a plus two times the square root of a b plus b equals a times b. But in the end, we can divide by that quantity and we'll have what r is. So let's observe that it's a times b over a plus b plus two times the square root of a times b. Okay, so I think that's good. Well, we've solved our kind of more general first step. We got the radius of that inscribed circle that we talked about before. Now let's go back to our original problem. Go back to our original problem where we have two circles of radius one and a straight line all touching each other. And then we form this cascade, if you will, of inscribed circles and then look for this area of you know, the collection of shaded circles. So observe that we can use our formula up here for the radius of a circle inscribed between two circles in a straight line just over and over and over again. So let's start off with that first inscribed circle. So it's between a circle of radius one, another circle of radius one, and a straight line. So let's maybe call that uh, R sub two. And I'm gonna call it R sub two for the radius of the second circle because the radius of our first circle is equal to one, the first shaded circle that is. Okay, so using our formula where A and B are both one, observe that turns into one over one plus one plus two. In other words, it's one over four. Okay, so our second circle has radius 
one quarter. Now, let's look at the third circle, which zooming in a little bit, notice that that's gonna be a circle inscribed between a straight line, a circle radius one, and a circle of radius one quarter. So we could call that radius R sub three, and well, using our formula, we'll have one quarter, and then one plus one quarter, plus two times the square root of one quarter. But that's pretty easy to simplify. Observe that we'll have one over, and then we can multiply everything here by four. Notice that this number right here is simply one. So we have four plus one plus four. So in other words, we have nine. So in other words, our radius is one ninth. Okay, and now I think we can kind of see a pattern lurking here. So let's notice that this first circle has radius one, which is one over one squared. The second circle has radius one quarter, which is one over two squared. And the third circle has radius one ninth, which is one over three squared. And now I guess what we could do at this point is prove by induction that the nth circle has radius one over n squared. And well, we can do that using something called a proof by mathematical induction. And what we need for that is, well, to check the first case. And we have checked the first case. And now what we'll do is assume that the radius of the kth circle is one over k squared and use that to show that the radius of the k plus first circle is one over k plus one squared. And so that's like a situation like we're trying to show over here. Okay, so let's see this. So let's notice that r sub k plus one, well, since the k plus first circle is inscribed between a straight line, a circle of radius one and a circle of radius r sub k, or uh, in other words, one over k squared, we can use our formula up there. So we'll have one over k squared over one plus one over k squared plus two times the square root of one over k squared. But then that pretty quickly simplifies to one over k squared plus one plus two times k, just multiplying all that out. But then we can factor that denominator and we have one over k plus one quantity squared. Okay, but that actually pretty much takes us to the end because notice we can calculate our total area here just by taking the sum of the area of all of these circles. So maybe symbolically that's going to be pi times the first radius squared. That's for our first circle plus pi times the second radius squared plus pi times the third radius squared, and so on and so forth. But we just calculated all of those radii to be one over n squared. So if you square one over n squared, you get one over n to the fourth. So here, this is gonna be pi, and then the sum is n goes from one to infinity of one over n to the fourth. But in fact, that's a well-known series that is related to the Riemann zeta function, and it has another well-known value of pi to the fourth over 90. I think we've calculated that on the channel before. So multiplying that by pi, you'll see that our final total area is pi to the fifth over 90. But remember, our goal was to find that total shaded area, and that's what we've done. And that's a good place to stop.